this music. Hey, welcome to another episode of Bur- oh, I turned down way too far, didn't I? <laughs> All right, take two. Welcome to another episode of Birmingham Badges. Come to you from Studio 77. Guys, I appreciate you being here, man. What is going on? Get the dope and dog. Double, double D. D. Double D. <laughs> D squared. D to the second power. Hey, do you guys ever read the narrative I write in on these? Yes, I always do, and they're really good. I like them. Yeah, I, I, like I put double D and I put Doby Dog in Prince's case. Somebody didn't know who double D was, but double D's probably going to stick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Double D, yeah. Hey, where the hell is fucking Hound Dog? Yeah, he's going to Anybody know? Anybody seen him? Oh, yeah. Have oh, you yeah. seen him <laughs> still? <laughs> we know. <laughs> where, we show know us exactly where, he's at. where he's at. Show us where he's yeah, at. Yeah, he worked today, and this you is mean why he went, he's not he here. He went to work. Yeah. He's stuck ah. in the sand again. <sighs> patrolling, patrolling the beach. Now, let me say, again. <laughs> again. Oh my goodness! You think you know you what might... it is? It's all that friggin' you know, white stuff on your nose, Gatorade, and uh, donuts weighing that thing down. You know, he oh, probably oh. got stuck if he wouldn't have just sat there for so long. <laughs> he's probably yeah, taking yeah, a nap. Like, like he's been working. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Some things just never change. Hell no, hell no. <laughs> but I, right, apparently, he's, he'll be here soon, right? He's going to pop. Yeah, in he says he's going to jump on here as soon as he gets to the house. All right, folks, you're going to see him jump in. The people who so are watching we'll us uh, on YouTube, you're going to see him we'll, jump in. We'll see if he's a jump renter. Yeah. What are you guys drinking? I broke out a new bottle. Of a scotch. Carpet. No. Russell's Reserve. Good. Kentucky uh, bourbon, uh, 10 years, 90 proof. Got a little bite to it. I like it, though. I do like it. And, and may, I, may I add something? I have uh, recently had something gifted to me. From Atchison Poultry, they made me a couple of wood cups like you guys got, so I'm no longer fucking left out. You know, I that's, like that's going to open up crew. a lot of questions, too, by the way. Look at that right there. It's you did. Chicken. You a did a friggin' short. <laughs> and when we say short is, you know, it's a 60 second or less, a little sound bite, uh, a video bite we put out there, and you're on a four wheeler somewhere? What's up with that? Um, so this weekend, I went to a family reunion for my wife in Indiana, Indiana, Ohio border. Um, and, uh, boy, just farmland everywhere. They had a couple of razors up there and four wheelers. And I was able just to get on them and they just say, head on out. So, uh, one time I went out on my own. Another time I went out with like two other people, just like dune bugging it, man. Like, oh yeah, man. And then they took me down to like a river bed, like a, I don't want to call it a river. It wasn't a river. It was like three, four, six inches of water. Like, you know, but it's, it's, it's like a, it's like a, that would be a, a creek. A, str- a creek. Creek. Okay. <laughs> well, Thank yeah, it you. could be a river. Right. They don't have those in Brooklyn. <laughs> when they, uh, <laughs> well, this is Indiana. When yeah. they when they go to, uh, when, when it rains, it probably gets pretty high. But anyway, down there in the water and stuff, man, these things are great. They can go in because the tailpipes go out the top and the undercarriage is like sealed, almost like a boat, you know? Well, that's pretty so you, cool. You can get in the water. It can come up to your door. Like we, we were sitting in water. Like you could be sitting in water. And it's still running because the tires are like this big, you know, and and it was it was just a lot of fun, a lot of fun making trails where there wasn't none, dude. I'm talking like he goes, take a ride. I go, take a ride where? Right there. And he goes, there's nothing there. He goes, make one. I'm like, <laughs> okay, yeah. So so we did a lot of fun, a lot of fun. They didn't know what they getting themselves into, did they? <laughs> no, city boy trying to be country, man. It, it always there's always some fucking funny stuff there. But uh, it was great. People up there are awesome. Uh, we had a big family reunion. We had set up a big tent because it was 98 degrees one day up there. It was hot down here, too, right last week, wasn't it? Wasn't it hot down uh, in your places, too? Oh, you know, yeah. There's, there's a heat wave, right, coming through the whole country. Hey, let me there. tell you, today was the hottest day so far on Shootout Mountain. It was probably cool. Water. 81 degrees. 81. Yeah. You know what I think about that, Steve? <laughs> Where's the live, Dobie? Where's yeah. the live, Dobie, yeah. dog? Yeah. I think but we we've had, had like 14, a, 15 to get days in a row of over 90. Yeah. But we uh, put up a I'm tent up jealous. there. <laughs> yeah, we set up a tent. We had two big uh, smokers going. You know, they do it right. Food, uh, sides, everything. They had the, we had like uh, canoes and different things in the in the in the lake, right next to the house. Oh, dang, it, man, dude, yeah. dude, it was great. Living and, uh, the dream. Yeah. But what'd you think of the short? The short was pretty good. I got yeah, it was pretty good. Man. It was I good. Liked it. Uh, yeah. 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 Sweet. You sweet, sweet, sweet. sweet. But yeah, I had a great time. But what are you guys drinking tonight? Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Back oh, up. Did you tell your friends with, with these side besides these razors that you know slow ride, and one day you're going to compare ride slow ride slow rides wiener? Did you tell <laughs> them about right. my wiener? 
And that's right. I saw what you did. Nobody there. don't know what my wiener is, does no, he? No, Doby Dog's puzzled right now. He's got the he's got the puzzle Dobie book. Doby Dog, like, <laughs> come up and ride my wiener. Like 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 Slow Ride's <laughs> asking us to ride his wiener, and we're about to get a little creepy here. No, he's talking about his uh, his own uh, vehicle. Yeah, my side by side. I named it Wiener. He named the side by side a Wiener. Yeah, the Wiener. Is that's not so, the one you got from your neighbor that wrecked it? Is it? <laughs> no, no. I tell you now, uh, any given day, I'm liable to go to the top of the mountain and play my Wiener all day. There you go. There you go. All right, so yeah, so yeah, so for that, what are we drinking? I am drinking. Hey, stand here, true to the Shootout Mountain. Jimmy Red homemade whiskey. Jimmy Red homemade whiskey. That's now that whiskey is from where? Somebody up there makes that. Uh, hypothetically. I got you there. So, what I'm. FBI, open up! <laughs> <laughs> huh? Gotcha. Enough said there. Okay. And uh, how about you, Doby Dog, Double D? It is Chattanooga whiskey. Chattanooga. Let me see the bottle. Chattanooga whiskey. one proof. It's a yellow corn, malted rye, caramel malted barley, and honey malted barley. Sweet. How's it taste? Good? Very good? All things Tennessee today. Oh. Now why is that? Oh, I know why. champions won a natty. That's right. Tennessee won the world uh, the College World Series, folks. And... Well, now Double that's baseball, D, right? Double D is a fan. That is baseball. Absolutely. Everybody know that. Now, are you one of those fans because they won, or if they lost, would you still wear that hat tonight and support them? Well, I've still been a fan. I've just been cussing them. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's obvious he pulled the hat out. It's not a brand new hat, so he's had the hat. No. Yeah. That's actually a hat came from the Belt Bowl in Charlotte when they played West Virginia about four or five years ago. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. And I want to give hard, a shout right? out. I want to give a shout out to the Florida Panthers who won the NHL. Uh, championship uh hockey and kept the trophy here in the united states in florida instead of letting it go to edmonton up in canada shithole well there you so, go um, there we go we that was their florida first Panthers. title too that was their first title tampa bay lightning had it down there in uh, for two years already this this past uh past five years has been in florida for three out of five years so florida's kicking ass in hockey you never would think it because it's so fucking hot you know yeah you're <laughs> saying, yeah how do you keep that ice yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have technology slow the hell <laughs> Don't talk but, about uh, me technology. Cool, cool. Speaking of I technology, know. this kind of side note. I was watching the news the other day, and you've heard where they're trying to get people. Ted Williams has actually done it, where they freeze their body. It's a cryo something. They cryogenics. freeze their body. So it's cryofreezeology. Huh? It's cryofreezeology. Cryofreezeology. So they freeze their body. Up, for the, yeah. One day they cure cancer, they can come back and bring them back to life. But they freeze right. just their head. No, really? Mm hmm No shit. That's what they say it on Fox. I thought I thought uh like Michael Jackson was putting like some freezer shit preserving. They probably did. He's a little different. <laughs> yeah, for future because he has the money too for future uh yeah, about gives away the cold shoulder. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those shows. He's gonna be here all week. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Rim shot. All right. Uh damn. All right, so, so you you guys have drank these before, and uh, so you want, you going to rate yours tonight? Let let the folks know yeah, what you think. I've never drank it before. Uh, Russell's Reserve Kentucky Straight Whiskey. That's ten, 10 years, yeah. and it's a ninety proof, and uh, it's got a little bite to it. It is um, to me, it is a it's it's refreshing, and it's got the bite. I kind of like the bite, kind of. Yeah, so it's know. a wild turkey product, so it's going to be raw. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah. yeah. I've had it before. I like it. It's good stuff. Yeah, it doesn't taste bad. I'm usually not a rye guy, but I like it. I give my, I give the Russells a. Uh, I'm not sure how much I got it for though. It's been a while since I bought it. Uh, yeah. I don't know a price point, but we actually I think it's like fifty six bucks, maybe. Yeah, maybe for that yeah. reason, a little bit high. Maybe I give it a six, just because the price point's a little high for mm -hmm. a daily drinker. But it's close to a set. It's close to a daily drinker for me. I like it. This one is. I'd give this. Seven and a half, maybe eight. It's really good. It's not bad pricey. I think it's like forty five bucks. Right. Not bad. I mean and they got a couple different brands, but it's it's smooth. I mean it's it's really smooth. Got a little bit of a bite, but not anything where it's just too hot. It's a ninety one proof. I guess oh, I'm the, yeah, I guess I'll do the rodinator. Exactly. That's okay. I guess I'm the new buck. I kind of like the cheaper ones for my for 25, 30 bucks. I figure is a daily drinker. Anything kind of up around the fifties and sixties is a little bit high for. I want to try to find that benchmark. The bitch made, bitch made. 
benchmark. Yes, benchmark. 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 And that's the Buffalo Trace alternative, right? It's just right. not aged, right? Yeah, and they've got uh, they've got that in regular. Uh, I think it's the was it number eight or whatever, but the regular, regular benchmark, and they put it out in five different other type of uh, benchmarks. Barrel okay. Proof. Sweet. Bottled and bond. I don't know. Hand off. I know he comes on here. And I think next spring shelf. I'm going to go to do the buff, do the bourbon tour. But they say oh, nice. they say you got to plan that stuff like six, ten months ahead of time because it's so. Well, I tell you, that, I tell you how to do it, and we all should do yeah. it. But you can go up there and get a travel agency. They'll set all that up for you. Get the motel, provide a bus, pick you up the motel, takes you on all these, all these distilleries. And that way you can drink. You don't have to worry about getting a ride home. Really? Dude, guys, I was told that if you go to Maker's Mark in Bartstown, they let you get a pour straight out of a barrel. Yeah, we, uh, you know, Hound Dog's got our name on a barrel. And really? It's coming to maturity next year. Yeah, we can, go, we can go up there and actually buy a fifth from the barrel with our name on it. Oh, that's cool. So, guys, you don't know this. Or maybe, I think I said it on one of the podcasts. I did the bourbon trail on motorcycles with some guys. So, I've been to a bunch of those distilleries up there. Um, Woodford Reserve, all of them, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Cool. Yeah, but we and we couldn't drink, like you say, it's hard to drink when you're on motorcycles. So you go, hell, there's like 15 of them things. Well, do y'all remember that bourbon I had on the very first podcast when we talked about the canine stuff? That Casey mm-hmm. Jones, mm-hmm. there's another bourbon trail tour, and it's just called the State Line, and it's not as prominent, but there's a lot of distilleries around there, and that's where that Casey Jones is right near the State Line. This is this is like a smaller tour, it's a smaller mm-hmm. distillery, but there's a bunch of them right there, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good deal. Yeah, nice, nice. I know yeah, the Woodford. This is a bourbon show. We're actually talking about bourbon for once. Yeah. I know the Woodford Reserve one. I remember because it was on like a horse farm. It was beautiful. We were riding in our bikes, and it was nothing but rolling a road, and both sides were fenced with green pastures. And every once in a while, you see horses running by. Very nice. And then you pull up, and it's a real nice, kind of like cabin-like, wood-like, log cabin-like building. And inside, there was the whole a whole wall was backlit with nothing but Woodford Reserve bottles, and it was glowing. That's cool. Like that's cool. Shit. Yeah, it was cool shit. I'll tell you, they say two things come out of Kentucky that's great, racehorses and whiskey because of the, the limestone water they have. Right. Yep. And that was one of the things with that Casey Jones threw, that that's one of the reasons it was put there, was because of, there was a lake or stream nearby that was real prominent, and that's kind of where they got their water. But, um... There's some of those places you can go up there and stay, and it's a cabin, but it's shaped like a giant oak bourbon barrel. Oh, oh really? Yeah, it's like see, a small, send us, like... Did you send us pictures cabin. of those, Doby? Somebody what? sent pictures, though. Did you send pictures of those to us? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I've yeah, seen those. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. be cool if you just get drunk just been in there. <laughs> Breathe in the walls. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just sleep in there, and you wake up drunk. Yeah. All right, guys, we got the liquor covered. We're waiting on Hound Dog. And, I, oh, I got a little bit of shout-out to Pat on our backs before we get started too much. And, and Doby, you may not know much about this coming on uh, as the new guy. But, you know, we have the audio side and we have YouTube. Right. On, on the audio side, you know, of course, all six seasons are on there. What the season five, this season's on YouTube. On the audio side, we on every listening platform out there. We had 303 downloads just this past week. Really? Uh-oh. 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 Dun, I'm right in the middle of something important. And drum roll, please. You look Good a little trouble. sandy there, Hound Dog. Yeah. Did you did oh. you bang the sand out of your shoes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is your favorite song what Lionel Richie stuck on you? <laughs> the beach. <laughs> and that's not oh. your first time, Hound Dog, is it? No, it's not. What they're talking about, I guess they've already told everybody I got stuck on the beach we, today in, in the truck. We sent pictures. <clears throat> Did you good? We, we sure yeah, you need to do something. You, you, you sound terrible, Hound Dog. You sound like you're sitting oh. in the box or something. Since you, you missed the, the pre-podcast, Rich, Hound Dog. Nice, buddy. Nice. I'm going to put them in the mail tomorrow. Sweet. We appreciate see, it. See, ladies and gentlemen, we can be bought. Can't yes. be bought. But yes. I couldn't get the Knobs Creek logo on there. They said it was spoken for. <laughs> hey, I, I yeah. had several people come by the house and won't know if, if Knob Creek sponsors us. No, you sponsor them. <laughs> oh, you exactly right. Yeah, yeah. they're driving Every new time cars because of me. Knob Creek uh, toothache in a, in, a, in a barrel, or Knob Creek regular, Knob Creek this, Knob Creek that. Yeah, I was really Creek, wanting that tonight. The smoke Knob Creek smoked maple. Mm-hmm. Don't have any. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
right. still sounds the same. Though. I can't. It won't let me select my microphone. Oh, yeah, you're, you're it's, it's doable there, brother. It's not. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll continue to work on it. We can hear hey, you. Uh, so. All right, let's let's back up. And Houndog Home Town is uh, tell the audience about our uh, listening side versus the YouTube. Yeah. On the listening side, we are in what is it? Seven hundred major cities in the United yeah, States, in about so every country of the world. Yeah, a lot of countries. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man, it's unbelievable. No and we are t- in the top ten listed podcast for our niche in the world. Oh man. So we nice. need we need to make sure, and we, I know we still make we make mistakes because we're used to seeing each other, and we're doing the uh, the YouTube side now. We need to make sure we still try to keep the uh, listening side know what we're like. We hold the, when you hold up these cups, like Doobie Dog just did, mm-hmm. the listening yeah. side has no idea what we're doing. Right. All right. Just a little, just to let y'all know, it says I cannot switch microphones while all the recording is going on. So I guess you're stuck with the way I. It, it doesn't sound bad. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So catch up, uh, Hound Dog. Yeah. What's your what are you drinking? I need something good for today. It's been a hell of a day on the beach. Hell of a day on the, you, you patrol the beach and yeah. you had a rough day. Or, I mean, or did, yeah, or did you just patrol that one area for like six hours where you were fucking stuck? <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> it helps if you keep moving, hound dog. <laughs> that one area was secure, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> secure it was, as man. fucking hell. What, what, hell yeah, yeah, there. Hey, somebody come yeah. by, woke him up, say, hey, dude, you know you stuck. <laughs> Time to go. Home. We had to call for a uh, police car, to tell a police truck, a four-wheel drive truck to come out there to pull us out. They couldn't pull us out because they were starting to get stuck. No shit. So we ended up having to get a backhoe from the town. Somebody had to call in somebody that already got off work for the day. Had to come back in, get a backhoe, bring it out on the beach, and pull us out. So let me uh, let me ask you a question about the truck you drive for patrol. Like that doesn't look like the best four-wheel it's drive not. beach vehicle. It's not. Like, yeah, it's like they one have, of those trucks you set the little heavy, cones up, the little yellow cones up with, orange cones. It's a cone. heavy tank. Is what yeah. It is. yeah. But the, you know what, they, Hound Dog? Steve has not got pissed off yet. Well, I just got here. Give me a minute. It's <laughs> not young. Not young. <laughs> no, it is young. Yeah, I would think they would have a four wheel, a, a, a decent four-wheel drive truck. We had, with the, we had, we had one last year. They had a yeah. regular uh, F. What, uh, I think F-150 or Silverado or something? Yeah, something, yeah, something like or that. Or Ram. Four-wheel yeah. four drive. It, it, it got the job done. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember it getting stuck ever. Yeah. They took that one away from us and gave us this big utility box truck that weighs 5,000 pounds more than what it Yeah, should. it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. I know when yeah, I went he, on the beach with my truck, when, I went to, when we went to the Outer Banks, the instructions yeah. were, okay, four-wheel drive vehicle and take about 20 pounds of pressure out of your tires down to about 15 pounds. Yeah. So they're kind of nice and mushy, you know. And yeah. then we had no problems. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't take that air tires, it's it's gonna be bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, we our tires was almost deflated. There's so much air taken out of them. Wow. <clears throat> still, still couldn't do anything with it. Damn. Yeah, but you get that beach money, man. Buy, how buy something good? You would think. You would think. <laughs> now, which which is it that you? Where do you actually work, Hound Dog? Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina. Okay. I knew it was somewhere in that area, but I wasn't exactly sure which one. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm here. I'm drinking well at 12, so here's to you, fellas. <laughs> I, I got some catching up to do. There you go. <laughs> All right. I know you're representing that uh, Burning Badges ball cap you got on. That's right. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. Ooh, excuse cool. me. All right, man. So, uh in your absence, we covered, uh, you know, talked about the short that uh, Rod Nitter did. He's up there oh, that living, a the, job, living the dream. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun up there. Yeah, a lot man. of fun up there. Yeah, Give me the eggs. Uh, yeah, we got a bunch. Yeah, did you find out which came first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, no, it's still up in the air, apparently. But I'll tell you what, I, you ever hear of a double yoker? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of it. Oh, yeah. Daddy's Boy. had some double yokers, man. The old rooster's working are overtime. Good. They're Boy. good. They're good. Yeah, we bought some eggs. Let me give us a bunch of eggs to take home. Uh, I got, this, I got, the, I got the tour of the plant. You know, see where there's the four thousand chickens are, and the, how the eggs come down the conveyor belt, and they get separated and put in. The whole process. It was cool as shit. Um, really, you know, really fun. Uh, didn't he have like a uh, a dairy farm as well? Uh, no, <clears throat> that was something he did for me and uh, my wife's uh, 
benefit. He took us to a dairy farm oh, okay. to see how a dairy farm works as well. Okay. Yeah, go, go ahead and give yeah. them the plugs. Make sure the audience knows who we're talking about. Uh, we're talking about my uh, my wife's cousin, Mike Atchison, and Atchison Poultry. He owns a, I guess, a chicken farm, produces eggs, uh, egg farm, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I went up there for a family reunion, and uh, he showed me his business. And I'll tell you what, guys, they work hard, man. He says there's not a day there's not a day goes by that somebody has to be there to work with the chickens and all that stuff every day, N- never a yeah. day off. So someone has to be there. So good thing he's got his uh, sons like- working with him. On your dairy farms, they got to be milked every day. Uh, those cows, listen, I'm a, I'm a semi-expert now, at least in my own mind. Those cows you saw, I, you remember the picture I sent you of them on the conveyor yeah. belt? Yeah. That's a conveyor belt. They go, each cow goes around that conveyor belt three times a, d- a day. Yep. Uh, for about a, uh, I don't know, like a, like a four to five minute milking. And that conveyor belt, which I have a picture of it here, uh, just slowly takes them around. And they're so used to it, guys. Yeah, they don't is even that gotta, like a circular... Yeah, I'm going to show you right now. Uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's really, really interesting. This is a picture of it. And just think this, they, they are moving. It's not, they're not standing still. They are moving around in a circle. All right, for listening side, you're showing us a picture of cows getting milked. Getting milked, yeah. Their udders are all hooked up to the machine. They're going to town, and they go around this circle right here. They go around what's, and, what's and the out the other side. What's the purpose of the circle? I mean, what's the uh, the, 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 it's, it's spinning. It's a carousel, uh, Hound. And the, it, it, the, by the time the cow gets to the other side and it, and it finishes its spin, they're done milking. It's, a, it's time. Oh, okay. It's and time they get out. And, yeah, and then they're let out, and they just follow the one in front of them, and they just keep doing that. And then those, the cows that just got milked go out to the field, eat and shoot the shit and take a shit, whatever. And then they herd them back in here for round two and then round three. So... Okay. Really cool shit. Yeah. Farmers, utterly, farmers don't get time off. No, that, no that every is, day. That is utterly fascinating. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I saw what you did there. I took a second, didn't I? I saw what you did there. <laughs> my, uh, my guy's a hunter, too. A couple of bobcats mounted on his wall. That's cool as shit, oh, cool. isn't it? Oh, cool. That is cool. He killed, killed one of uh, those with, bo- not, with a bow, I think. Yeah. That, that's and then he had a couple of, big old, uh, couple of big old deer heads, you know? Yep. <clears throat> Big hunter. Oh, good gosh. That is a big did you see Sasquatch? I did not see a Yeti, but you know what? I was sitting on the porch out there at that lake house in the middle of nowhere, and I probably heard some of the biggest, deepest throated frogs ever. Like, <laughs> that's all you fucking hear coming from the lake and different other noises. And it Steve, was kill him. Dead. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, they knew to stay away from Steve's house because when he does yard work, man, he just murders things. Today you did yard work, didn't you, Steve? I did, man. It was terrible. I, I, I about passed out because of the heat wave we've got. <laughs> oh, yeah, 81 degrees, you son of a bitch. It was up to 81 degrees at yeah. Wow. yeah. Oh, that's no, rough. No, that's he, rough, no humidity. Buddy. 81 mm-hmm. degrees. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was a great time up there. Yeah, but no no animals was killed during this. Uh... <laughs> grass cutting. <laughs> yeah, grass cutting, yard working day. Yeah, no animals killed. Right. I gotta say today was probably the hottest day so far this year for the beach. It was hot as hell and humid. I mean, Do you know what the degrees was? Hot. That's all I know. Nah. <laughs> yeah, but it's the beach. You can just, just go around the water and get cooled off. You can just say the like, hell, hell like hell like. Oh, Do you have yeah. any idea what the water temperature normally is there, Hound Dog? I don't this know. This ocean. I don't know. I'll find out. <coughs> I, I take a, I take one of my thermometers that I got and stick it in the water and see what it says. Yeah, the water's pretty warm. I know, I know that lake water was warm up in Indiana, boy. Slow because in February. Right, they'll, be back, they'll be back up just a little bit, brother. Right there. There you go. When he snowed in. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. We'll be talking to you at Shootout Mountain, yeah, when you're snowed in, brother. We're down yeah, did, uh, the, biggest, the biggest snow we had was a foot. All right, man. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, okay, uh, Hound Dog, I know you're a little behind. You don't know what we talked about during our pre-podcast meeting, but we got some uh, sad stuff to talk about when it comes to these friggin' oh. Illegals, okay. They're just able to all, freely walk into all, our country and take over. All over the place. Yeah, I'll start uh, one if you don't mind. But I'll start yeah, it in, in Germany yeah. just because this could be where we're heading. Uh, so in Germany, a 20-year-old woman was sent to prison for, I believe, uh, a year because she called a guy a migrant who raped a 14-year-old with with eight other guys a pig she got more time for calling him a pig 
Then the one guy did, there was nine of them. They found nine separate samples of semen on or in this 14-year-old girl, matched it to these nine guys, eight got let go, one got convicted, and the lady yelled at him or something during the process uh, and uh, sent, sent a message to him on, on a social media that he's a pig. Uh, along with approximately 140 other people who are now being investigated. Who does that, what does that sound like? That sounds like that January 6th shit, you know, where yeah. they try to hunt down people for just walking around. So yeah. there's 140 people being investigated for calling these people names, and she's in jail now, and there's one guy going to prison for, I don't even think it's, uh, I'll find it here in a second. It, it's not for long, but she's going to do. She says Germany. Germany. And, and they say it's, it's, Incredible. What happened was the girl, there was a park and there was something going on at the park. And there was a lot of people there. Well, she got separated from her group and then uh, she was attacked by four guys. After they were done, apparently they begun inviting other men to rape her via the chat groups, uh, sharing the news that they just got, that what they just did, and that welcoming people over to that part of the park to also partake. Uh, and this is a 14 year old girl. Um, and she was attacked the third time and a fourth time. Third time by a single man, fourth time by four guys. Um, and they just kept doing it until finally she was able to break and, and, and get out of there. Uh, a total of 11 guys were initially charged um, by DNA. DNA, guys. Yeah. Mm. There's, Understood no, there's no doubt. Mm. Stick a fork in them. That's DNA. Your yeah. shit's on her. Yours. You. That's it. But no. Oh. Somehow, somehow they get out. Now, I wasn't in the courtroom, right? Um, uh, they said of, of the... Of the Identified suspects, guys. Listen to the listen to the deliberation here. The uh, the uh, separation of the, uh, the different people. A pole, a Polish guy, a pole, an Egyptian, a Libyan, a Kuwaiti, an Iranian, an Armenian, an Afghan, a Syrian, and a Montenegrin. Don't even know what the so, fuck that is. Yeah, Montenegro. Say, what is a but, yeah. So the what's has, the co what's the common theme with all these guys? Little Migrants. Little. Yeah, they're immigrants into Germany. The men had a team of 20 defense attorneys arguing their innocence. 20. Arguing their innocence. Really? With their DNA semen samples. They're still arguing their innocence. A 14-year-old. Not an 18-year-old who might have gave consent. A 14-year-old. Anyway, and then there was... Um, you want to hear the kicker? S several videos of it were found. Actual videos of the crime. Through the WhatsApp. You heard of WhatsApp, right, guys? Yeah. Um, uh, unbelievable. And um, now she's got PTSD. She can barely... Think about it, dude. Jesus. Un unbelievable. A, a child just destroyed by... Yeah, but there, there's two stories here. That is unspeakable in itself. And that they're allowed to get by that with, with their DNA there at the scene. Because that's undisputable evidence. Yeah. You can't deny that. Yeah, but the other thing it. is the freedom of speech. You just call me a pig, and you go to mm -hmm. you go I, to jail I, for that. I, I, I correct myself. They were all convicted. All nine, eight walked free with probation. I could stand corrected. The the ninth one got two years and nine months in prison without parole. So one out of nine went to prison. The other eight got out with probation. So the oh, one right the the one went to prison was he the mastermind behind the whole thing? Or? Doesn't even say, but. Who's the map? Well, you know. You know what I mean? Master, I mean, who started the whole thing? I don't know. You, you just well, you think remember they would Rod, all go to... the case back in maybe the 80s where the guy got, um, the kid got molested by some kind of scout leader or priest or something. You remember that? And and, the, and his father shot him in the airport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, and a they, and they, they let him off. They, 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 the father got free. It wasn't a scout leader. It was, it was his... It was his uh, like martial arts. Them. It was his martial arts teacher, martial yeah, arts, martial arts uh, yeah. instructor. Well, I, I shot him too. And they're walking through the walking through the airport, and he was he acted like he was on the payphone, with his with his back turned, mm -hmm. and then he, he just turned, boom, caps him, hung up the phone, and they tackled him, and he actually got off. Yep, they let him Good. off because everybody yeah. understood. Yeah, that's guys, just, that was that's what needs to happen. Yeah, my my biggest fear is that we're heading that way, guys, because now. It seems like uh, for someone to go to uh, go to prison in New York, uh, you have to be an ex-president and running for re-election. 
But yeah. sure enough, not a migrant attacking cops, not people uh, uh, robbing and raping out in the streets. They all get out, right? No bail. I mean, this is ridiculous. But yet you got to watch what well, you say, you know? What I, what I don't know, Rod, do you know or if the, uh, the group of nine people over in Germany, do they have any ties to any uh, terrorist cells? That's, they do not, they do not, I, I would have mentioned that they do not say anything about that, any of their connections. But it's they're kind of, not, it's kind of strange. but they're, but they're not, um, none were of the German heritage. That's the, the one thing. While, yeah. uh, let's see, five of the men were in possession of German passports, while the remainder were not citizens of Germany. So if they're oh, not yeah. citizens, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I, just unbelievable, dude. But I'm just, I'm just worried we're kind of heading well, in that Well, sadly, direction. we had that happen here in the States. You got, you got that as well? What's that? Yeah, there was one in Houston, too, just in the last few days. Yeah, where the uh, illegal, uh, the illegal immigrant, the... Uh, Killed a 12, 14-year-old girl? Yeah, uh, her and he, he, what, she had a guy with her too, the same age. Kind of both that, up. That, that was the oh, yeah, that right. was last week. Hey, yeah, right. we, yeah, that was the, that was the two the, uh, thirteen year olds. Yeah, yeah. And, yep. And, and there was about that two last in week. Maryland, in Central Park, I think it was. Yep. Yep. Uh, and these a, illegals are it's unbelievable. I, I got the twelve year old right here. One of the uh, two illegal immigrants suspects charged with murdering twelve year old Jocelyn Nuragwe in Houston last week. Has bail set at ten million. I got a problem with that too. If you're if you murdered a twelve raped and this they dragged her under a bridge for two hours and raped her and strand and strangled her and left her there. Why is there a ten million dollar bail? Why isn't it no bail? Well, yeah, I agree, but now, exactly. you got to realize that this particular judge has been historically known for giving no to low low to no bail. Right, right, liberal. Just say it. Yeah. You can say it. Everybody fucking knows. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this guy uh, Ramos, twenty six and. Martinez Rangel, 22, each charged with capital murder. They found on their phones that they would be flight risk because it was uh, one of the guys had an ankle bracelet on, cut it off. Yeah, then, that's right, had an ankle bracelet. Then uh, snatched the girl, raped and murdered her. So they're wondering all, right. all the different breaks in the criminal justice system. When he, when he cut his bracelet off, why wasn't somebody on him right away? Yeah, what out. kind of bracelet was, yeah. he, was he wearing? Was it for Homeland security or something, right? Yep, because he was there illegally. He's one of these dudes who came in. All right, so so he wasn't like uh, put in jail, released with the ankle nope. monitor, nope. like they call a guest on the jury. Right. And correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding, I guess Homeland Security puts it on. Yeah, he had a GPS monitor, remained under house arrest, among other restrictions. He's supposed to be at home, so he cut it off and left, and then he did. That. And, and I'll say this: coming from having worked in probation and parole, the ankle monitors are worthless. Because a lot of times they give them a certain window where they can go to work, they can go to the store, they can go to the doctor, they can go to church or go to their lawyer. So they can be out and about at certain times, and that doesn't mean shit. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean they're, they're where they say you're going to be, right? But that's move it one right. side or left, you, we're getting like ears from both guys. There we go. That's, Is that better? So yeah. they can go out and do their own business because they have these rights to go see their lawyer and go to work. Yep. But so they can actually go out and do that while they're while they're on that monitor. So they can go do whatever the hell they want to do. A little more. The two suspects uh, from Venezuela had entered the U.S. illegally before being released from custody. So the normal process is we catch these illegals coming across, we get them in custody, and then we release them to the inner inside the United States. That's what's yeah. happening. And then this is the result. On the promise they'll they'll appear for their uh... within seven years. Yeah, within their immigration hearing. Seven years. That's the number. Unbelievable. Well, I just it's going to have to come to a point where people are just fed up. I hope yeah. so when, when it comes yeah, to we'll vote. we'll see come uh, I hope so. November. But yeah. You know, too, you got to go back to that to the voting thing. There was one survey done. I don't know if we talked about it last week or not, but they did a survey. I saw it on Fox, and you may have seen it, too, but out of the people they surveyed, 23%. Of the people they surveyed believe that Biden is competent enough to serve another term. <laughs> crazy. I know, isn't that isn't that insane? Now, crazy. Obama and Clinton, they're they're all they're out they are what they are. But think about it, they were at least competent to carry on the conversation. Biden there was some he was they walked across the airport and it looked like he just didn't know where the hell he was going. Yeah. Well I'm a firm believer that this is Obama's third term. 
Yeah. Uh, he's just I running mean, the show. Spot from, on. Spot he's running on. the show from off off air. Yeah. Because, Absolutely. Because and this is a fact, folks. I'm not. This is not conspiracy. This is this is called facts. Uh, Biden has nothing but Obama surrogates surrounding him. The same type of cabinet Obama had, Biden has with him now. The same people, Jake Sullivan, all those guys. The same people are around him. <clears throat> so it's the same ideas, the same uh, type of things being pushed. It's just that Obama doesn't have to take credit or heat for it because he's no longer president. That's and why it, it's so crazy because yeah, Biden's have, taking all the arrows. Biden's taking all the arrows and all the hits. Absolutely. If you have any kind of common sense or any ability to think on your own without somebody thinking for you, mm -hmm. you can realize that Biden is a puppet for somebody else. Yeah, he doesn't know where he yeah. is. No way he's half the time. All right, guys, look at this here. If you want to look at the difference between Trump and Biden era, inflation rate for Trump, 1.9%. Uh, Biden, 17 percent. Gas prices average. Gas price for Trump, two dollars seventeen cent. Biden's three ninety six. The average rent under uh, Trump, one thousand ninety six dollars. Under uh, administration now is twenty three hundred and ninety five bucks. Grocery prices uh, for Trump was plus three point five percent. Under Biden, plus twenty five percent. Groceries are up twenty five percent. It's across the board slow. It's inflation across the board. Electricity is up 21.43%. Uh, yep. And there's people that don't believe it. They think it's better. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the people who actually think it's better. I'll tell you one worse than that. It's the people who voted for Joe Biden and then complain on social media that their grocery card is half as full but costs twice as much. And I'm like, why are they complaining? It's exactly what they voted for. But they don't seem to understand that the administration and the, and the rules set in place and the executive order signed and the printing of money, the forgiving of student loans, the destroying our gas and oil industry here, being, being self-sufficient energy producers. We're now yeah. energy importers. We're not energy exporters. Yeah. All right. So, so, so you, what, talk, what you talk about the hole. What else we got, guys? Hmm? We you go down a that? rabbit hole with it. We don't, we don't like to go down. Oh Let's no! Get, I love going oh, down. Yeah. You don't like going yeah. down. No, no, it's I not, love it's going not, down. It's not police. It's not police related. Neither is Bigfoot. Fox, <laughs> <laughs> we, we can watch I say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Neither is Bigfoot. <laughs> but anyway, no, that that anyway. was actually that was actually Bigfoot was our uh, listeners wanting him back. I'm still so curious to, to see Hound Dogs um hear Hound Dogs video or audio with it. Did Jerry send him? Oh, did I not? Man, I didn't send it to you. I, I'll, I'll send it to you. That's probably the pre-podcasting, cool, cool, cool. right? Well, this is the, yeah, this is the uh, type of person that uh, typically supports the uh, the woke people. If you can see that. <laughs> oh, my up. God. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that a real person? That looked like. Yeah. yeah put that back person. up. Or we, you know, it froze up there. I'll put it back up there. Oh my God! All right, explain that. What is that now? That's a uh, Biden supporter, I guess. <laughs> wow! Wow! Uh, somebody just sent that to me the other day, and I thought, "Yep, that looks like somebody that typically supports the uh, woke agenda." Yeah, I don't want to go keep with that rabbit hole. We're going to get out of it uh, slow, but he's got the most diverse uh, administration around him. I think that's the only qualification you need is to look strange, fucked up, or have different ideas, and then you're in because. Uh, these people are like, how about the dude who was taking I, all the luggage? I think you just described from the us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this what? is our wheelhouse. <laughs> this is, this was this on your shirt, Slow? Oh, apparently I piss off snowflakes. Who knew? Oh, nice. <clears throat> nice. <laughs> Backwards. There you go. Nope. It's nope, perfect. It's perfect. Yep. It's, hey, nice. leave it right there. Leave it right there. Don't move it. That's all not right. nice. Hell, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Hound Dog wanted him to leave it on his shirt. Exactly what he face. meant. Yeah. yeah, I showed everybody my uh, T-shirt, and this old mug of mine was no longer on the on the camera. Oh, there That's are true. some snowflakes out there for sure. I just showed <laughs> you. The bad thing is, you talking about we're talking about bully stuff. It's bleeding over into bullies. Yeah, That's it. Yeah. Rookies? Oh, my God. Yeah, let's, let's talk about this. Let's get an yeah. idea, uh, Dobie Dog. Let's talk about that, because in our day, when we... Before we retired, that you still weren't allowed uh, tattoos for guests on PD, were you? Do what? Yeah, you were. Were you? I I had them. You weren't allowed to what? Yeah, what? But you, you couldn't show them, right? You wasn't allowed to get any. Like I was, I got them on my forearms. I was grandfathered in, and but you could not get them 
if you got hired by a certain date, you could not get tattooed. Right. Yeah, Show and them. if you're on patrol, you had to be clean shaven. Yeah. And well, I'll tell you this: they that that has changed. You can you can have them wherever. You can have beards, of course. Uh, but they have started letting our guys wear earrings. Yeah, that's that's taking it too far. We have supervisors that wear them. Hey, you say the guys, you don't talk to girls, you're talking about the actual guy, male. Super, male sergeants who wear earrings. So what happens when they get that thing ripped out during a fight, or do they not fight anymore? They don't fight You anymore. can't tell them that, Steve. You can't tell them, you can't tell them anything. They don't fight anymore. That's the problem. Nope. That's true, too. But they, they, they don't they don't believe anything. You know, and Reggie and Steve and, and Rod will tell you, I'll tell you, but when we first started, and this kind of goes back to what we're talking about, we respected the people who went before us. Oh, yeah. And I can't tell you how many times I sit down with people like Lynch or Calvert, you know, different people like that, who Reg, Reggie, Robbie, who sit there and like, hey, tell us, and we learned from what they did. We learned about what it was like, and we learned what it was like 10 years before us. They don't oh, do yeah. it now. It's all about me now and what I can get for myself down the road. Yeah. And I tell you, I don't know if it's in, because in our day, if you're the new guy, you get a crappy car, you get a crappy section, oh, yeah. and there's no no two ways about it. No, we don't come yeah. to don't, me as if I was coming to me and say, hey, I don't like my section, Sarge. Well, guess what? Park your car and won't you walk it for a little bit and see if it gets any better. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. They're, they yep. they do not get that concept now. Yep. And that's and the There's thing. also a theory, a concept with us where they look at it as if you have been on patrol more than three years, you are lazy and don't want to work. Because oh. you haven't gone on to something special, something different, something extra. Oh, man, you need uh, to be on patrol uh, at least how, five years before you do anything uh, specialized. How, how, how often do those specialized uh, things like detectives or whatever come up, come available? Not very exactly. And then yeah. they, okay, I'll tell you, you know, touching about being the new guy and you get the crappy jobs, I'm a rookie training with uh, Bob Hullen and just about to get, re- get released. And we was having a, a, on the west end, we had a radio shack. I'm really dating myself now. And there was a truck that would back into the radio shack windows, jump out, load it full, and leave. So we're going to stake it out there, figuring out we, got, we had a, a rumor that it going to hit the radio shack. It's pouring down rain. I think I remember that. Captain came to me. He says, get your shotgun out of the car. I got it out of the car, and he handed me a, uh, one of these little, like, uh, like a little picnic table type chair, little steel chair you sit in. Mm-hmm. He dropped me off right at the edge of the woods, pouring down rain, sitting that thing, just getting soaked and wet that shotgun, waiting for them to be in the eyes and ears in case some people showed up. Oh God, don't don't give a rookie a shotgun. He he's tore it because it's not AR. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, I gotta I gotta carry a shotgun. There's some of them opting not even qualify with a shotgun anymore because they don't want it. They shouldn't have a choice. Yeah, they shouldn't. That's the problem. We give them too many choices. Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah, when I first don't started. Tell them I gotta, no. uh, Never tell them no. Yep. Yeah, well, it's, 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 it's one simple word, guys. It's the entitlement factor they have now. This generation feels yeah. like, even, even in my academy days, um, it was shut the fuck up, go do your sit-ups in the mud, right? I mean, whatever. It, it, there was nothing that was off the table, and you didn't say a peep about it. You just mm-hmm. did it. Oh yeah. It. Now, 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 there's an open door where people can go. Hey, Sergeant Slowride, uh, Do- Dobie Dog told me to go fuck myself. Uh, I don't think that's very nice, you know. Or, yeah. or Hound Dog told me to do push-ups in the mud and I got dirty. And then they'll get called in by by you slow and said, Hey, you gotta you gotta be careful. You can't you know we we can't be treating them like that. Back in the it's day, it was the like feelings. they want the, the idea of, of rookie school, folks, is to put you under the pressure, to put you under the stress, to put you under what you're uh, just a sample of what you're going to see when you get to the serious people on the street who are serious criminals. And you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to be untested <clears throat> in front of one of these uh, just released prison fucking monsters and not be able to hold your own. And they mentally, will test you. Mentally, physically, you know, intelligently enough to get to, to be able to get through that, that situation and get home safe. Because oh. there's no time out there. You don't go to the sergeant and complain about this guy <clears throat> while he's jumping up and down on you, takes your gun and shoots you in the face. 
So the, the idea is to weed these people out in rookie school first to see if they can handle it, to see if you want to do it. So if you don't like me yelling at you and I'm your freaking uh, sergeant in, in, in rookie school, then you're really not going to like it on the street because there's no timeouts and there's no do-overs. No, we had a guy mm. it was in rookie school, and he quit rookie school because he came in one morning and quit rookie school in BLET because they told him the night before, you're coming in to fight the red man, the guy in the padded suit that you got to fight, and he's padded, you get to hit him, and you get fake batons and that kind of deal. Yeah, you're, he you're come going, in that you're going full force this, too. This is an yeah, all-out full actual full. fight. Yeah, that's right. right. So he comes in the next morning and quits rookie school because he says he couldn't sleep at night because he was had so much anxiety from knowing he was going to have to fight the red man. The red man. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. But when that's we like were in Stephen King driving, book. shooting, fighting, that was the fun part. Let's do it. Have fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and, 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 and the red man's a padded up guy for so people who don't know what we're talking about. And you and you, he's an instructor, and you fight him because they want to see. Yeah, and all the pads are red. That's why right. it's called the Red Man. Right, right. And and you fight him, and you punch, and you kick to see see what you can do. One, and to see that you can take a punch or a kick or yeah, and, and you he's can actually, wrestle. He's actually attacking you too. So you're, right, right. Yeah. Like so, have, so once again, right, kick, right, whatever you can do. Yeah. Right. So then, once again, folks, when this happens to you, and it will, when you're on patrol, you will I'm fight these. people. <laughs> How many of these kids have ever taken a punch, Steve? Right. Hey, I right. tell you, uh, I think yeah. Jim Manderson once said it. But I, I, we'll give it to him either, either way. But, you know, it was talking one day. He said, you know what? During rookie school, every candidate should walk through the door. And once you walk through the door, somebody knocks the dog shit out of you. Mm-hmm. If you cry yeah. and you want to run away, you're done. If you get a mad want to fight, you stay. Yeah. yeah. But they I remember one time when I first started – we had, and y'all know it, we had the old box cars, the squared LTDs. Oh, yeah, man. They had the square back, square back. The machines. We, we like, called the square back. Cars. And I come in one day and I thought, I got one of the new ones. I got the new Jet Sonic, the oval looking ones, right? And got I had the blue a newer lights, right? Crown Vic with a newer body style that was kind of rounded off. I was like, I got a pool car. I got one of the good ones. And I, it was it was Cranford come in and said, I picked up the keys to take them. I was like, because I was the first one in the office to get the keys for the had pool cars, which everybody rotated driving because everybody didn't have a take-on car. So I'm like, oh, I got one of the good cars. Cranford comes in, like, that's mine, rookie. I'm like, you take it from okay. Me. Hey, <laughs> I almost said the lines. Yeah. I tell you, I'm the, about the first month, once you got a rookie school, you get signed to a shift, you're told when you go into the uh, briefing room, roll call room, don't <laughs> sit down. You no, have to wait and let no. all the senior officers oh, yeah. who already have their seats, I always sit in, let them sit in first. If there's any seat at that, that's where you can sit. And you better get up. Oh, yeah. That, that's got got if you seat. all your stuff sitting on there, man, they'll just take your stuff, slide, knock it off the floor, and take you out of their seat. Yeah. If I remember, you do I remember that West. now, they are so damn butthurt that they, oh, yeah. it is pitiful. Oh, yeah. And another I thing remember. that irks me, because I used to say something when I was assembly, I get it, we all got phones. And I get it, you got to stay in touch with your family if they need you. They can't get off the damn phone in assembly. I got a couple of times on them to, to put it up. You can take 15 minutes away from that phone to listen to briefing. Oh, yeah. And yeah. not worry. It's, and well, it's pretty important stuff it's being said. Mm-hmm. If you Why want to have a rate, your wife calls you because of an emergency, then it's fine. But you ain't got to sit there and text on the phone while the sergeant's talking. And yeah, the those, sergeants those, will let them do it. Those briefings uh, tell you who's loose, who you're looking for, who's the dangerous yeah. person. Yeah. And if you're not listening, you can run into this guy not even know. What happened? Remember the bolo, which is a be on the lookout, right? You right. don't remember the bolo, and then all of a sudden you end up getting killed by the guy because you didn't listen in the fucking briefing. Cause you were yeah, the, yeah, you get a run down. What happened? You know, the time you left that morning or whenever, mm-hmm. and until you come back, you know, you get a briefing of what happened. This is what happened. This exactly. Be this. Yeah, and to go right. along with that, slow, there is no camaraderie. There is no extra stuff after work with your shift. You know, in choir practice, which choir everybody practice. got together after the shift. Oh, yeah, get man. together on their day off. That doesn't happen anymore. Right. You know, we used to have three shifts, first, second, and third. And after second shift, you worked one one shift five days off three, five days off three, five days off four. But after second shift, it was still, man, you, what, what time we, when we get off, Reggie? Midnight. 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 It'd be 2 o'clock, people still back, guys still back still talking, yeah. hanging out, talking, telling stories. and That that is non-existent anymore. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I tell I you what, know. I had a rookie. One time, he come out, he come in, he's like, I feel bad, Sarge. I said, what? He said, Got a call dealing with the guy, and the guy, and the guy's like, he's belligerent in the middle of the road, suspicious subject call. 
thought somebody they see somebody walking down the road. Think whoever calls in thinks he's not something's going on with him doesn't seem right. So he gets out there. And he starts talking to him. He's like, "Fuck you! I ain't talking to the fucking police. Fuck you!" And walks <laughs> the bad off. Bad guy said that. Yeah, the bad guy says that. Bad guy says that to police and, and walks off. Okay, the officer does nothing. Lets him walk off. So what has he done? What is this guy now going to do since he talks to the police? He's going to do it again. And when he walks off, he has a gun in his in his waistband and in his back of his waistband, and then he let him walk off. That's one thing. I, that's one thing I always did, guys, and I'm sure you guys did it too. I treated everybody fairly, but yep. if you pushed or you did something out of line, you got it. And oh, the yeah. reason I did that was one because one. I had to take control. You have to take control of the situation so you don't get yourself yeah. hurt. And the bad guy two, dictates what you do. Right. Exactly. And, and two, mm-hmm. I don't want to set slow Reggie or, or uh. Doby Dog up with this guy the next time he encounters a cop. I want him to know that, damn, last time I was out with that Rodinator cop, he whooped my fucking ass. I'm not going to fuck with these, these the, the slow ride. That's the thing. You dude, set him up. That's yeah. exactly right. But if you're sitting here, yes, sir, no, sir, and, and he, he walks all over you, then all cops from your department are, are pussies, and he'll try the next one too. God forbid it's a female, right? Yeah. So I never wanted to set up a fellow officer for an ass kicking or, or, or a problem. I always wanted to send the right message of respect, but it's going to be firm respect. Oh, yeah. and, and if I don't get respect, then you don't get nothing. You get the fucking, you get my size 12 in your ass, period. And I don't you're mind talking, if I take you're it. About, you're, you're talking about your boot, right? My, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Rim shot. Uh, yeah, my size 12. Uh, I don't mind taking you to the hospital and then to jail. Not a problem for me. It wasn't a problem for me back in the day. And that's why there's cops getting hurt today. Exactly right. right. Well, that too. All liability. this woke crap. Everybody's scared to death. You know, liability. You judge, if I, if I shoot this guy, especially mm-hmm. if, he, if I'm a white cop shooting a black guy, mm-hmm. oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. And it's, there's nowhere in the, your, your charge academy that you— charged policing while white. There's no, there's no, there's nowhere in the academy you're taught you have to be hit before you can hit somebody either. Oh, you're you right. feel threatened, you knock hey, the fuck out. And I told the guys yep. during briefing too, if you hit somebody, you hit, hit them, them with everything you oh, got. Cause a yeah. slap in the face, or if you knock them unconscious, it's the same use of force. And what did I tell you guys? When you see a cop doing this, people will say, "Man, that cop beat the shit out of that guy. I mean, he he was beating the hell out of him." Or you just see this. Nope, yeah. that cop just hit him one time. One so hit him. Yep, he and didn't he, beat his you know, ass. That kind of goes back to a little bit of the, and kind of going to segue into something else a little bit. But that whole mindset goes back in the whole canine thing because you want the dog to bite one time. Well, how many times that dog bit him? He bit him one time. He got four punctures. Now, they're bad punctures, but he ain't bit him six times all over his damn face. Right, right. Exact same concept. The one I was saying is perception because when people exactly. see a cop just this, it could be a female, right? Not – that a female doesn't hit hard. She, maybe she does. I don't want to piss off females. So I don't fucking go there. But, yeah, we're, you know, sorry, we're see, sorry, Hound Dog. If you see a female doing this, <laughs> they'll say, oh, she, she hit him so many times. It was excessive. It was excessive. But if it was just one of those, boom. Nope. Well, you, he just you, hit him couple, once. He just hit him once. A female officers, man, I'd love, if I was on the call, I was happy to see them pulled up to back me up. Oh, hell oh, yeah. 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 Do what? Yeah. Absolutely. There's a couple Please. female officers that get GPD, guest on the police department. Yeah, they held their own. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I had some good part. I had some good girls in. And then uh, you had a couple Charlotte of them, man. Is... Yeah, I had some good girls in Charlotte too. Yeah, they were good. Yeah, really had, nice had a couple good fights with them. Had a couple good fights with them. Yeah, with them, they were good. I mean, they, they were little things, 100, 130 pounds, but man, they get on the back of that motherfucker, you know. At least hold them up for me. I'm going, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. there's another thing too. <laughs> hey, in, in their defense, in the small <laughs> officer defense, especially a female. They're more likely to get get by with the wrong, the wrong phrase, but they're more likely to be found uh, the use of force be found justified, correct, because of their size as opposed to rodinator. I yeah. couldn't catch you a break. Yeah, and, you know, and, and, and in my defense, guys, tell me you haven't run into that five foot six, hundred fifty pound guy that was like a fucking buzzsaw. Oh yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and you're like, well, you're so big. Why didn't you beat him? I said that motherfucker was limber and strong and fucking fast. Oh and, yeah. Yeah, he turned and twist off to his way, get, get away from him, you catch me away I, from him again. Yeah, I had to pick him up and drop him on his head, man. That fucker wouldn't stop. <laughs> you yeah, know? Man, wow. like, in, like in two seconds, he hit me 20 times. Good yeah. God. Yeah. Well, I, I will say this. Back when I was on the ship with Slow and Hound Dog, we had, a, we had some good dudes. 
I mean, we and, and yeah, we, we knew. I mean, I knew that if I got in the middle of some, Reg, Robbie, Mike, some of these guys, I knew that if it got bad, I did not have to worry about my backup. One, they were going to be there. Two, I knew like those three in particular. I knew they were going to handle business, and they were not going to let me get hurt. And here's and the deal: that goes a yeah. long ways. Because yeah, that's the deal. You know, you, you're exactly back right. Coming, one, they're coming. Two, they gonna handle business. It, that's if right. that's the, you're right, if you get in your ass whooped, the whole friggin' shield better get in their ass be getting, mm-hmm. getting whooped. Yeah, I agree. Because those guys, and like we gotta go back to what I'm talking about, they're old school. You you weren't gonna push their buttons. You weren't. They weren't gonna put up with your bullshit. They were gonna be fair. They were gonna be oh. polite when they need to, but. They were not going to let you hurt somebody. They were not going to let you hurt one of their buddies and one of their other officers. Don't don't let them see you have a weak spot, man. Good God. What? <laughs> don't let them see you have a weak spot. Yeah. They'll be all over you. And that group, that was a good damn group. We had a good damn group because you knew they were going to handle business. Well, you know, you gotta, you got to be nice to everybody until it's time not to be nice. Exactly right. And again, to repeat myself, the bad guy that dictates that. Exactly right. He dictates you know, putting hands behind the back, getting in a car, and going to jail, or he dictates getting killed. And and yeah. and and of course, the use of force policy that we followed, unless there's been changes in the last two years, is whatever they give you, whatever they bring to you, you can have elevate one level. You know, so if they're punching you, you can go ahead and give them the OC. If they're if they got a knife, you can go to your gun. Like you can go one level up, folks. So they dictate literally what happens to them. Oh yeah. yeah. But that's what the public doesn't get. We don't get to dictate what happens. It's the bad guy that dictates it. And the majority of the time, we more. are reactive to their action. Absolutely. We don't. We are always mm-hmm. reactive. We have to wait to see what they do a lot of times. Yep, yep, yep. They just released a uh, body cam footage of a Charlotte case. I was listening to the news this morning where uh, a guy was se- – a real quick story. A guy was seen on camera – a, a regular camera in the streets pull a gun from his waistband look at it and then put it in his pocket so they had police respond police get out with the guy you hear the body cam video say hey pal let me talk to you for a second you hear the guy say I ain't do nothing and he starts to run and he pulls the gun out of his waistband and turns towards the cops cops open up and uh, shoot him in the arm uh, he gets winged goes to the hospital goes to jail and gets released same day uh, but it ends up he's being charged with one carrying concealed weapon, two he was a convicted felon, and all that could have been avoided if he just would have stopped and talked to the officers, gave up the gun, right, went to jail peacefully. But instead he's got a hole in his ass now. So he dictated that whole encounter, right, yeah. from start to finish. Even if he had the gun, he could have just ran, not take it out of his waistband and just run, you know, and not turn. Like or he could have thrown the gun, right, a, a, a host of things. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, all kinds of stuff. But it is what it is. And as a result of his actions, he's not going to be called lefty. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that's just how it fucking, that's just how it is. So, yeah. But then again, I did say he's already out again. Didn't I say that? So a convicted felon with a gun who ran from the police and was shot was out the same day. So just. And you know, too, I know y'all talked about this on a previous podcast, but the public and the bad guys and the judges and the lawyers all the people out there other than the police, they don't get how many people that legally, by law, and understandably, by the situation, that we could actually shoot and we don't. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean we all been there. Hey. How many times did we not shoot somebody uh, we could have? Hey, let me yeah. tell you this. We went to a SWAT conference, and the attorney general's there. He opens up with his speech is, y'all aren't killing enough people. That's how he started his speech. Yeah. Wow. I mean, how many of us have had people we could have shot and didn't? Every single one of us. A lot. A lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I had, I, I, had, I had a trigger pulled on a gun one time. I'm telling you, if it was a six pound trigger pull, I had five pulled. And the, and the hammer was back about to release, and I was able to let off and not shoot a 15 year old kid who was six foot two, 220 pounds, just robbed a taxi cab with a shotgun and broke the guy's jaw with the butt of the gun. That type of kid. He looked like a group. A, he was as big as I was. And uh, yeah, two things I just about on, killed him. I just about killed him. On the same line, we can de-escalate our use of force. And also, there's between a bad guy and us. You know, if you're a good cop, 
you can be violent. Mm -hmm. It has to you be. You have to be violent. You have no, to no, be no, violent. No, 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 no. Let me, let me yeah. make this. Let me say A man is useless unless he's capable of great violence. The key is you have to be capable of great violence and be able to control it. If not, exactly you're right. useless we, fucking piece of shit. The difference between us and bad guys mm -hmm. is we can control our violence. You, damn you have right. to be able to turn on and off your violence. That's like right. That. Exactly. That's right. It kind of goes back to the. I don't know if I know the. Um, what's the guy's name? There's a sheepbox. The Grossman. There's a sheepdog theory. Oh yeah. The yes. sheepdog, the wolf, the sheep. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. We have to be there, and that's mm -hmm. why some people don't like us, and and a lot of people don't realize that we shut that off. I mean, we shut it off. And what so Toby's talking about is, the sh a sheepdog and a wolf are both from the canine family. One's a bad dog, so to speak, right? The wolf. And the sheepdog guards the sheep, which is the herd, or maybe the population, right? And sometimes the sheep look at the wolf and the sheepdog as both being canines and both being dangerous, and they don't like either one of us. Until the wolf's taking a chunk out of that fat-ass sheep's ass, and then it's looking for the sheepdog to come over and do something and save it. 911. That's kind of like what's happening. Exactly. exactly what that was. That's kind of like yeah. what's happening in society today. Cops are looked at the same as the bad guys. They don't like us. We carry guns, and we're capable of violence. Oh well, you have to. You, be. Need, you need violence to combat violence. That's right. it. What is it that one of the founding fathers said about um, good men who are prepared to? Good men. Go ahead. No, I was going to ask Reggie. Can't remember how it goes. The good men who are prepared to do violence. I can't remember. It's like Thomas Jefferson or John Adams or somebody. Yeah, he was uh, just talking about how good uh, men are gonna have yeah. to be prepared to do bad things. Yeah, yeah. something along it. something along it. those lines. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Man, the movie Patriot it, 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 it sums it right up there. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, we're at 62 minutes. That was time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, 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 man. So yeah. Uh, last last call, shout outs, anything you guys want to uh, bring up real quick? A, I had a great time in my, my my hangout in Indiana with the with the family reunion, and again, thanks to Atchison Poultry and. Uh, Cooper Farms, I hear, is a big deal up there. They're the ones that help Atchison become the success they are. So shout out and thanks for my, uh, thanks for my bourbon cup, Mike. I appreciate you, brother, and thanks and the to short, your family. The short was excellent. And your sons and everybody who helped me ride the razors and stuff. It was awesome. Thanks. Right, so what was you guys doing? Showing you're showing your, your bourbon cups. cups. <clears throat> We're, Coming bourbon to you cups. soon. Yes, sir. Can't wait, dude. That's a nice one there. I like the I like the band. Ryan's the only one has to worry about it because he's a guest. Well, well Hound Dog's getting all serious. He got his glasses on and he <laughs> is ready to school got, us. Yeah, I got a shout out I want to give. Uh, Keith Schumacher. He's a uh, fireman here at, uh, at Ocean Isle Beach Fire, Fire Department. He has a nonprofit. On, he, the, uh, let's see. Executive director of a nonprofit organization called uh, Father Friendly Schools. It's a national thing, the National Alliance of Father Friendly Schools. And <clears throat> they do a lot of good things. And basically, from what I can understand, it's uh, for kids that do not necessarily have a father at home. No, no, so like they, a big brother type thing. Kind of, yeah, kind of like that. He, yeah. he's a, he is a uh, 501c nonprofit organization. And I talked to him tonight, actually. And. Uh, Maybe we can get him on the podcast at some point. That'd be great. To hear, yeah, he could tell us a little bit about it. That'd be nice. Yeah, yeah that'd be he, cool. Yeah, he's a good guy. Uh, Keith Schumacher again. <clears throat> Keith good Schumacher. Deal. Good job, Keith. So, All right. Yeah, so you check out the website, fatherfriendlyschools.org. Uh, and I'll put that up on Facebook whenever it comes gotcha. out. All right, oh, good that's job, right. guys. I, I, I had one more. Oh, hey, Dave's TV, guys. Remember, man, they support us. we got to support them. Dave's TV on YouTube. Uh, got some funny stuff. Got some beer tasting stuff. Got some uh, different things they do. They're real good. Yeah, he Dave's does TV. with beer what we do with yeah. bourbon. Yep. yep. Well, he actually goes a little more detail. He really, he really goes in detail describing these beers and stuff he's drinking. He goes to the beer, yeah. the, the different beer uh, fests and uh, does all that stuff. It's fun. He's a yeah. beerologist. Okay. Okay. That's a great All right, great guys. Word. Uh, yeah. Uh, if we first came on, we was talking about the difference between the audio side versus the video side. Video side, of course, YouTube. If you want to see some or, or listen oh. to some really good old stuff, Hound Dog, what, what do you think is your favorite season? I think season two is on the audio side. It's probably yeah. my favorite season. Yeah, season two was good. We talked, man, we talked about all kinds of crazy stuff. Oh, yeah, man. Two, man. Uh, and, and back then, season one through four, we're actually in a real studio sitting, facing each other, drinking all from yeah. one bottle. And it was uh, a really, really uh, cool atmosphere to be yeah. in. 
Yeah, well, yeah, so I, if you want to you want to hear that. you want to hear some really good old stuff, go back to season one through four on the audio side. Use Google Bourbon and Badges, it'll come up in a buzz sprout, and you can go there and just just go through the archives, pick out what you'll listen to, man. You're gonna really like it. And right. if you're on the audio side, go to YouTube, man. Like and subscribe. That's the we video need to side. love. Yeah, we're growing on the yeah. the video side. Couple, we need to love, man. Yes, sir. Couple things before we go. Um, if I forget, um, kind of, I kind of got started thinking about this when Rod started talking about the um, farmers. Got kind of shout out to the truckers. I mean, the farmers get all this stuff together, but who oh, yeah. gets it to us? Who? I mean, right. who keeps gets yeah. us to our house? Who gets it to the right. store? The yeah. Eggs, the milk, the meat. I mean, a lot of people take it for granted. I come from a little blue collar background where my dad had his own stuff, but still, I mean, that's the people that get it. And when all this sure. bullshit with COVID was going on, they kept us yeah. going and they worked their asses off True. to get us what we needed. Without sure. the truckers, two weeks is all that society can survive. Two right, weeks. Exactly. And um, two, um, just hats off to all the rookies out there that are getting ready to follow in our footsteps. Listen to the people that went before you. That's what how we learned. It's still dealing with people. It's still dealing with the scumbag. It's still dealing with everybody. And kind of a little side knock, good balls. There you yeah, go. hey, and if you're a new guy and you, you listen to this podcast and you go back and tell your chief, by God, I'll listen to Bourbon Badge and they said to do this, now it's by God what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That'll get you promoted. <laughs> Quick. Yeah, but do you get, really want to be well, with that? Get you on the podcast <laughs> anyway. Yeah, you can come tell us how you got fired. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look at the Sergeant Siler. <laughs> hey, guys, I enjoyed it always, man. Hound Dog, we're glad you finally made it back here with us, man, and glad no longer here. stuck be on safe, the beach. Be safe, Rich. Yep. And remember, let's drink about it and drink responsibly. Hell yeah. Take care, guys. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a Studio 77 production. And I'll be first to start with that, man. Please take it off the beach and off to your family. <laughs> you mean it's over? Well, shit.